Good morning, everyone. You ever see, God forbid, when there's a crisis, so everyone who sees it, that there's an accident or some kind of a, an event, people start responding with, uh, with uh, you know, crying, yelling, screaming, they uh, lose themselves, and then they call 911, and the first responders come, they immediately jump into action to rescue or to save the person. The question is, what's the difference between all the bystanders who, and, and the first responders? And the answer is that there's, there's reacting and responding. Reaction is your emotional response to something, your natural triggered response. Your, that, that's your reaction. Your response is what you do about it. First responders are trained how to deal with situations of you know, whatever it may be, crisis. And therefore, they immediately respond to the situation and they treat the victims with whatever has to be done. The, the react, the people just react with hysteria is just because they don't know how to respond. So they just yell and they cry and they scream and they can't deal with responding with the, with the situation at hand. So like, the key is to learn how to be a first responder, not a first reactor. That's why they're called first responders, not first reactors. So there are certain things that trigger us. Instead of just responding emotionally the way we feel, we have to know how to respond rather than react. I'm using this analogy to explain the difference between all the biblical figures leading up to Avram and Avram Avinu. Avram was the first responder. Everyone else was the first reactors. Adam and Eve, they're in the garden. The snake comes, says, this fruit looks luscious, delicious. They're tempted. They just react to their impulses and they eat from the fruit. Then you have the story of uh, Cain and Abel. Cain gets angry at his brother. He loses his temper out of jealousy. How does he react? He murders his brother. Then you have Noah. He's saving the flood. And instead of rebuilding the world, responding to the need of the time, he just reacts to his depression. He plants a vineyard and gets drunk. Now we look at Avram Avinu. Avram Avinu is the first responder. He responds to every crisis, to every situation. God tells him, Lech Lecha, the world is filled with idolatry, you need to go out and change the world. He doesn't throw up his arms and just uh, become overwhelmed. He goes out on a mission, he goes on a journey to travel the world as one person, to change the whole world's ideology. Then he hears about the story of his nephew being captured in battle. He doesn't just stop crying and yelling and go, oh, what's going to be, oh, he, he gets together as men, he goes to battle, he rescues his nephew. Then when there's a quarrel between his nephew and shepherds of Abraham, once again, he doesn't get angry, he deals with it, he responds, says, let's make peace, you go your way, I go my way. He shows us how to respond in every situation. But the ultimate response is, when the story of the Sodom and Gomorrah, when God comes and tells uh, Avram that he's going to destroy the wicked cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, what does he do? He starts to pray. He starts to plead with God. And he uses what may be considered a chutzpah, where he says to God, will the judge of the world not do justice? How can you destroy these cities? Maybe there's 10 right, 50 righteous people, 45, 40, 30. And once again, he responds to the call of the hour to try to save the people. And that's what we learn from Avraham Avinu. Don't react to situations, respond to them. Do what's needed. Don't just get lost in the moment and overwhelmed, but do whatever has to be done. And that's what Avraham Avinu's legacy to all of us is. To have the conviction and the strength to stand up and do what is right. As someone said, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for everything. There was a movie called Conviction, actually, which was about a woman by the name of Betty Ann Waters. She was an African-American woman, and her brother, younger brother Kenny, in Massachusetts, was convicted of a crime. He was committed, convicted of murder. A 48-year-old woman was murdered, and he was an, on the scene, and he was a known troublemaker, and they I gave him a five-day trial. They set him, sent him off to prison for life. And she believed in her heart of hearts that her brother was innocent. That yeah, he was a troublemaker, but he wasn't capable of committing murder. And he, she knew in her heart that her brother did not do this. But that was it. The justice system sent him off to jail for life. What's he going to do? She was a high school dropout. She got her, she completed her GDS, I think it's called, to get her high school diploma. Then she enrolled in community college. She finished her college courses. Then she went to law school, 
and became a lawyer, passed the bar, and spent 18 years fighting her younger brother Kenny's case. And there was a, a movie made about this, a documentary, because after 18 years of not resting and turning over every stone, she found the evidence through DNA to prove that her brother wasn't the murderer. And after 18 years of sitting in jail, her younger brother Kenny went free from prison. And they asked her, how did you do that? And she said, because there wasn't one moment that I ever doubted his innocence. And therefore, if I would have given up on my path to become a lawyer and, and, and rescue him, he would have spent the rest of his life in prison. And that conviction kept me going for 18 years. And that's really the story of the Jewish people. We've been fighting for justice not for 18 years. We've been fighting justice for 3,800 years. In all the courts of the world, where Jews have been fighting for justice. And we won't rest till we find that justice. And where did we learn that? From Avram Avinu, who stood up to God in this week's parasha and says, God, will the judge of the whole world not do justice? Avram teaches us how to respond and how to act.